Hey there, welcome back to SimTech channel. In this tutorial, we're going to clarify some important points about PV buses. In this tutorial, we've got two PV buses and the parameters in load flow analysis. This is basically a follow-up tutorial of our previous tutorial on the basics introduction of load flow analysis. I'm talking about this particular tutorial that set the stage for the following tutorial that is this tutorial where we drew a non bus bus system and did a deep dive into the analysis of these non bus bus systems. So basically this particular tutorial uh, explains everything we did in this tutorial. So if you haven't watched this tutorial, I recommend that you do so, but being here will basically help you a great deal before you head on to that particular series of tutorial. I received some great feedback from you all, particularly about the table showing the given and unknown parameters for different bars, basically for the two buses. Specifically, there was some confusion about why reactive power was listed as a given parameters for the PV bus and how the specified voltage relates to the actual voltage at the bus. So in this tutorial, we'll address this question, clarify the standard definition for load flow analysis parameters, and ensure you have a solid understanding of how PV buses work in load flow analysis. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Great. So let's first quickly recap on the three main type of buses in power system load flow analysis. So these are the slack bus or the reference bus, the PV bus or the generator buses, and the PQ buses or the load buses. So in this tutorial, we've got two PV buses, bus for generator one and generator two. We've got one slack bus, the reference bus here for our external grid, and we've got six PQ buses, basically the buses where we can connect our loads. Now, as specified in this tutorial, the slack bus, the given parameters are the voltage and the angle, which is sitting at zero degree, and the unknown parameters will be P and Q. Right, so when we head over here on the external grid, we double click on the load flow analysis here, we can see that the voltage set point is at 1.04 per unit and the angle is zero degree. So these are the given parameters, the voltage and the angle for our slack reference bus. Now the unknown parameters, which are P and Q, Basically, the real and reactive power that will be pulled out of this bus, we will determine them after running the load flow analysis. Next are the two PV buses where the given we specify as PQ and the unknown as voltage and the angle. This is where we need to clarify some confusion in this particular tutorial. Great. So as we all know, reference buses or slack buses they compensate for imbalances in this entire system to basically ensure that there is power balance and in the other hand the pv buses they represent generators where the voltage magnitude is controlled and lastly we've got pq buses where the real and reactive powers are known and given and the unknown parameters will be the voltage and the angle because the voltage at the PQ buses and the angle will be dependent on the type of loads that we connect onto these buses. Now let's focus on the PV buses because this is where most of the confusion arose in this particular tutorial. Earlier we've shown a table where the reactive power was listed as a given parameter for the PV bus. However, this is not a standard definition. Let me explain why. And also why did we list V as an unknown parameters for the PV bus? Well, the specified voltage, as you can see here, for both PV buses is one volt per unit. Now, 
This is a given parameter for these two PV buses. This voltage is actually what is known as the target voltage for this bus. These target voltages are the voltage that the generator must try to maintain at all time while there is all sort of loads being connected on the system. And also while the reference bus, the slack bus, is trying to balance the entire system. However, the actual PV bus voltage in practical scenario may fluctuate due to system loading, reactive power limits, and other factors. This is why in this table I listed the voltage at the two PV bus as unknown parameters, although earlier here in this table, this voltage is actually specified. By the way, if you find this tutorial useful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel. You are also more than welcome to share it to your social media network. That will be highly appreciated. So in reality, PV bus voltage, as a standard definition, they are given, they are known variable because this is the values that the generators try to regulate the system with. But the actual voltage at the bus may fluctuate, may change because of the loading and reactive power limit limits and other factors that may occur on the systems. The other confusion is that we listed the reactive power for the PV bus as a given parameters, whereby in a standard definition, the reactive power are unknown for the PV buses. But why did we list it as given parameters? I'm going to explain why. Because we know that the generator's reactive power's output is basically determined by the load flow analysis, and this is subject to its reactive power limit. So this is why these parameters is not a given, it's an unknown parameter, and it will be determined based on the interaction in the system loading here. But why did I specify Q as a given parameter? for the PV bus while it's supposed to be an unknown parameters. Well, I did this for simplification to basically help uh, beginners focus on other aspect of the analysis. However, I realized this could be uh, misleading and I appreciate the feedback from the community pointing this out. So to clarify in real world scenario or detail analysis, Q for the PV bus is an unknown parameter for this bus. The generator's reactive power output is basically determined by the system load flow analysis loading based on the conditions and the generator's reactive power limit. Now let's quickly demonstrate by running this load flow analysis here to basically show why particularly Q is supposed to be an unknown parameter, not a given parameter. Because in our table here, we specified for both generator 1 and 2 having reactive power of 8 and negative 12 respectively. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and double click here. And we can see that for this generator 1, we've got 8 mega volt ampere reactive as a given. It's supposed to be unknown. Okay, and for this generator 2, we have a similar situation, negative 12. Now, I've already run the load flow analysis here, and we can just look at the result here. Coming out of the generator, we can see that there is a reactive power of 348 megavolt ampere reactive. Okay, that is for generator 1. And we also have a reactive power of negative 127.1 megavolt ampere reactive for generator 2. Clearly, these values, they have nothing to do with the parameter of the reactive power that we uh, did enter. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and replace it with zero, okay? Because this is a PV bus. Click OK. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this bus. Remove it, replace it with zero as it's a PV bus. 
because we will determine the reactive power after computing the load flow analysis but now the voltage is a given parameter as we've already clarified is a one volt per unit but in real uh, practical scenario this voltage may fluctuate depending on what's going on in the system here that is why i listed it as an unknown variable but now if i execute a uh, load flow analysis now and we're going to notice that the reactive power for the pv bus one is still the same 348.0 megavolt ampere reactive and the same value is also showing here negative 127 so this clearly showed that uh, the reactive power is an unknown variable we don't have to enter it because this negative 127 is dependent on all these loads that are connected in the pq buses okay and obviously the reactive power uh, limits or magnitude is dependent on the power triangle right the capability of this generator right so this generator which is now supplying about 384.29 megavolt ampere so that is the apparent power and the real power component is 163 and 348 reactive power so that is the limitation and we can clearly see that this generator is overloaded okay because it is being driven beyond its capability so we can see that problem need to be fixed in this system here it's either we must upgrade improve uh, the capability of this generator or bring in some extra supply into this pv bus to compensate for this generator because we got lots of loading going on in the system and that is the same situation with generator 2 as well and the other parameters is the phase angle of the generator so when we hover here over the bus we can see there is a 10.12 degree phase angle for generator 1 and over here on this bus here it's 13.52 degree phase angle so these are the unknown parameters that we actually now know because of the load flow analysis so now i'm not going to dive uh, deep again into these uh, analysis because we've done that on part six of this tutorial so i really recommend that you go watch that part six that is this tutorial where we did a deep dive into what's going on here so the key takeaway in this uh, clarification is that PV buses, uh, the voltage, they basically specified, okay, they are given, and the actual voltage may fluctuate, that may change depending on the situation on the loading, okay? And the reactive power is definitely uh, a, an unknown parameter for the PV bus, and that is calculated, as we've shown here, based on the load flow conditions so that is it guys for this uh, tutorial if you found it uh, useful please don't forget to like share and subscribe to simtech channel for more content on power system analysis uh, using dig silent and also if you'd like to take your learning your power system journey into the next level consider joining the channel membership because as a member, you'll get access to exclusive perks like early access to tutorial, personalized support and question and answer in real time, right session, and more personalized tutorial when you request. So thank you so much for your support because your support helped me create more high quality uh, electrical engineering tutorial for the community. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.